I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to talk about fitness and fertility. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I am a reproductive endocrinologist helping people build their families for over 15 years. And one of the most common questions from my patients is how much should I exercise when I'm trying to conceive? This is such a confusing topic for so many people. It's confusing because every person you ask will give you a different answer. And so in this video, I want to review the evidence and help answer your questions about what you should and shouldn't do while you're trying to conceive to exercise or not to exercise. That is the question in general exercise is good for you. Moving your body is wonderful. It decreases risk of high blood pressure, um, insulin resistance, diabetes. It helps your mental health, you know, moving your body just improves your overall health and well-being. So we know that exercise is good for you, but there's, there's some data that too much exercise is not good for you when you are trying to conceive. People have a tendency to really focus on exercise as a way to lose weight and high body weight obesity has been associated with irregular menstrual cycles, um, lower success with fertility treatment and decreased fertility rates. It's not black and white. There are some people that technically are obese based on kind of archaic measurements, which are body mass index, it's kind of a formula with your height and weight. Um, there's some people that are very fertile at an overweight level. So it's hard to say that a certain number on a scale is going to impact someone's fertility. And it's not black and white to just give guidelines like, oh, your BMI should be this, therefore you're going to be fertile. Because everybody's fertile at different weights. Every body, every person's body is different. And exercise and obesity Yes, the more you move, the lower chance you're going to put on pounds. People who are exercising have a higher tendency of losing weight, but moving your body is not all about being a number on a scale. There's actually some evidence that people who might look fit and on the cover of a magazine looking great and some <laughs> yoga pants actually are extremely unhealthy. And so you can't equate a number of a scale with health or reproduction. Although yes, there is data that high body weight can impact overall fertility, but I just want to be very careful about how I deliver the message and realize that every person is different for a great review on the impact of fertility, especially on women with obesity is from 2015 and um, I'll link it in the notes here. It's a great article. I know it's from 2015, but it goes through physiology and understanding how high insulin levels can impact ovulation, how high levels of estrogen that are stored in fat cells can impact overall health and reproductive well-being. So that's an excellent review if you want to learn more about obesity. It's not all about weight or what you look like in a mirror exercise can benefit your fertility kind of at no matter what weight there's an interesting study that showed that women who would fit normal weight on you know the medical chart if they're just sedentary if they're not moving their body they have a lower fertility rate that's pretty interesting so it's not just numbers on a scale um, there is a benefit to moving your body regardless of your weight but too much exercise is not good either. An interesting study from Nori looking at over 4,000 women who were reporting their lifestyle, how long they were trying to conceive, showed that moving your body up to three hours a week was associated with more regular menstrual cycles and a higher fertility, but too much exercise, exercising to the point of exhaustion and stress in your body can lower fertility rates. Another great article that really goes through how strenuous exercise can impact luteal phase hormones, ovulation, regularity of menstrual cycles, et cetera, I will link here. Um, but this study really showed that in highly active strenuous exercise, high level athletes, that there is a longer time to conceiving and an impact on your overall fertility. So what did I just say? I basically was all over the map. Moving your body is good. Overweight can be associated with lower fertility rates, but over exercising can also be associated with lower fertility rates. And so 
Should you or should you not exercise? And if so, how much? One article tried to put a bunch of studies together. It's called a meta-analysis where they pull together a bunch of different studies that are looking at this question, like how much exercise is good or how much exercise is bad and try to come up with a recommendation based on a lot more data basically said some exercise is good, but too much is not good for you. So read that article too, but I can tell you what I tell my patients. When you are trying to conceive, move your body. Don't stop exercising, but you might want to modify. Think about it like in a physiologic way. When you are pushing your body to exhaustion, where you're sweating profusely, where you're unable to talk while you're exercising or, you know, really panting when you're getting that endorphin rush, you know, that runner's high that people talk about when they're exercising a lot, all of those things are pushing out endorphins and they're also pushing out cortisol, which is the stress hormone. And in that state, your body is in fight or flight mode. It is focused on running away from that bear in the woods, not focused on reproduction. So the more stren strenuous exercise you put on your body, the less focus on reproduction will happen. And I know, like I was told in medical school, like, oh, as long as someone's having regular menstrual cycles, then they're not exercising too much. Well, okay. Yes. The menstrual cycle is a litmus test on your overall health. It's, I think it should be like another vital sign that we check on because there's so much coordination and things that have to communicate for us to even have a menstrual cycle once a month. It's amazing. And it really means a lot of things are working. However, there are definitely people that have regular menstrual cycles and they probably are, are ovulating, but they still might take longer to conceive because there's just so much more to it than that. So I don't think you can say, oh, I can run 50 to 100 miles a week and I'm okay because I'm having regular menstrual cycles. I just don't know. I don't know for you. So it might help to modify a little bit. Some people have told me, oh, well, as long as the BMI is over, pick one, over 18, over 20, then that person's fine. They've got enough body fat to have regular menstrual cycles and to be fertile. That just doesn't work for everyone either. It's hard to fit into a mold. Other people have been told, and I've had attending say, well, oh, just keep your heart rate under 140 and, and, and that's okay. Well, maybe that's okay for a lot of people, but man, there are some incredible athletes that work out an incredible amount and their heart rate never gets over a hundred, right? The more fit you are, the more used your heart gets to, um, you know, being really high performing in your body, but at a lower heart rate. So I don't think that works for everyone either. Anytime I talk to a patient about maybe cutting back a little bit on exercise. I, I, you know, so many people use it to help their mental health, to decrease stress. Some people honestly get um, addicted to exercise and that endorphin rush. So it can be really um, nerve wracking when the doctor is saying like, okay, let's cut that out. So never, I never want to tell anybody to stop exercising, just maybe modify run, but maybe not as many miles or don't push your body to the point where you get that endorphin rush or you're really um, stressing your body out, do more low impact exercise. So if you follow me on Instagram or TikTok, you know that I love my Peloton. Peloton got me through some of the most stressful times during quarantine because I could couldn't do other forms of exercise. And so I sometimes tell my patients who are huge fans too, you want to do like low impact rides on your Peloton. You want to do like a Cody or a Robin ride, not an Alex or a Kendall ride. You know what I'm saying? So um, <laughs> um, sometimes that really resonates with people. You know, yoga is wonderful, but there are some really intense yoga classes out there, like high heat, like some vinyasa classes are serious workouts. And that is so fun and amazing. It's been a part of my life on and off through the years. Um, but you and I might do some low impact yoga and just modify a little bit. Sometimes I I have patients that are like, well, you know, Serena Williams won the Australian Open in her first trimester of pregnancy. And I'm sure she didn't cut down on her training while she was trying to conceive or even in early pregnancy. So how can you tell me that I have to cut down? And it's like, wait, you know, I am not telling you to cut out exercise. I think it's healthy. I think it's great to move your body, but you just might want to modify. So to recap, one of the most common questions I get as a fertility doctor is how much exercise, what's too much, what's too little. And the answer is 
It's different for every person. You should talk to your doctor about what's right for you, but I don't want people to completely cut out exercise. They might just need to modify. I hope this video was helpful. Like this video if it was helpful. Comment with questions that you have, other topics you want to cover, and subscribe to this channel. Stick around for more learning.